I Gucci Ape on Twitter. I'm also Cyber Writer on uh, everything else. Uh, YouTube and everything. Now, I just want to say, like, crypto has completely changed my life in a in a very positive way. And like, I've always wanted to, you know, take my people with me. I didn't want to go anywhere without bringing my people along. And th this is kind of a hard thing to do, you know, because different technicalities, you know, different barriers that could prevent your community from joining in. In my case, my marginalized communities have a lot of barriers. And as this crypto world grows larger, now we must recognize uh, that these echo chambers that will create more divisive uh, things that, uh, you know, amongst each other rather than create synergy. So uh, in early January 21, I, um, um, you know, went ahead and started this project called the Cyber Panther Party. It was under these ideals, you know, like to take it upon myself to create a system that can help the community and a system that leverages NFTs and, and blockchain, essentially, you know, to, um, you know, create change. And at the very bare minimum, I wanted it to be somewhere where I could share what I'm learning and what I'm doing with my community, uh, which, again, wouldn't necessarily see that uh, without, without, you know, being exposed to it. So, um, and, you know, I knew it's a, you know, but when I launched the project, I knew it wasn't a, a crypto native audience per se. So like we weren't looking for like sales or anything. We knew there's gonna be a lot of hand holding and you know, here's how you use a wallet, here's how you do this, you know. So we didn't we didn't expect to make any money out of it and we didn't care anyways. We were just on a mission. You know, it was uh, it was like, you know, uh, it was all the times that I was included and like people brought me in and were like, you know. You can, you know, you can, you can be something. You can do something. We can do something together, and we're all one. Um, that I benefited from. And I just want other people to experience that, uh, you know, and and many more people to experience it. So, so we launched the Cyber Panthers Genesis Collection in April of 21, and you know, started gathering those that were interested in our, you know, kind of new new age outlook on technology and uh, where activism would go, uh, given our new, you know, means of activism. You know, so. You know, you no longer, I don't think, have to hold a sign as much as um, connect with as many people as possible. So I think, you know, Web 2 even uh, and Web 3 uh, empower us uh, to do that. But with Web 3, it's even more because it's permissionless and uh, there's a lot more to it. So, and we'll get into some of those positives on how blockchain can change the systems directly. So, um, you know, let me just, let me just kind of scroll here in this script because I had a whole production video that was supposed to be behind me, but we're running late. I'm part of the hackathon, so I've been helping people hack all week, and we have a few cool projects tomorrow. So, you know, something might come out of this Eve Denver again, as always uh, happens in Eve Denver. So, but so basically, you know, I didn't feel like what we were doing with the Cyber Panthers was very effective. Um, initially, we didn't get the reach, you know, the reach that we wanted. You know, the information was there, but. You know, it's too technical. It's too even even at, at its simplest forms. You know, and so we were just like, man, like I, I knew there was there was like some way that we could do better. There's a bigger system that was you know needed to be manifested. You know, at least in thought, in theory first. You know, in order for real change to to occur. And so you know, while working on the Cyber Panthers, you know, I realized like the major systems that were working almost like uniformly against our marginalized community specifically, but just against everyone. Because remember, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Um, and those were, those were, those, those systems that I feel like were the most potent uh, were the policing and law enforcement systems, the uh, student debt and education system, and the property rental systems. You know, like single family homes to be specific, more specific in that sector as well. Uh, so now these problems are pretty severe to say the least. Like, the very least. Uh, but while I looked closer, there was an even bigger problem uh, than that. This problem, uh, I realized, was the charity system. Because it, 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 you know, it fakes as it's helping, but it's not. And it's a lot of times, you know, it's money being laundered by different individuals. And, you know, people, <laughs> people remember the lie, and then they think the thing happened. But it's like, it you actually didn't help, you know, uh, you know, cure cancer or whatever it is that you were trying to do. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of examples of, of this, uh, this kind of thing here. So, um, let me see. Go ahead and turn this back on. So, the realization that all of these problems are systemic got me thinking about creating an even, 
more powerful system or just a powerful system to help fight back. Now, this is where the idea of the system of good comes from. So essentially, <laughs> it's a human-powered protocol that allows anyone to connect to a network of good from anywhere at any time. The most advanced thing ever, you know? Um, we could just uh, be good to each other, essentially, and uh, you know, operate from a, a good intention point, and then I think that will help us you know, at a very base level kind of try to even the, uh, uh, the inequality, you know, because, you know, wealth inequality gap is, is at its largest it's ever been, um, and it's moving very fast. Uh, in fact, only about 30% of all the donations out there come from the top half of the 1%. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's uh, staggering. Now, alleged, alleged donations, or not alleged, but like supposed donations, you know? Um, so, so, I think we all know those traditional systems of oppression. We observe them every day. Um, some of us benefit from them. Some of us are oppressed by them. Uh, so, I mean, so listen close. So, like, all you can hear are the echoes of injustice all around. And this is the dramatic part where I have, like, stuff going in the background and stuff. But we'll get to that. Y'all check out the YouTube channel. I'll, I'll still finish the production and put it on there um, after the hackathon tomorrow. Um, but basically, these... The sirens wail in the distance, a warning of the systems that bind us. They claim to serve and protect, but too often they do the opposite. And the worst byproduct of systemic oppression is the lack of inclusivity, because it marginalizes people. Do you know that feeling? When you're left out, maybe silenced or ignored, you know, the feeling of being excluded uh, from the very systems that are meant to support you. Um, Sometimes I turn off my social media because of too much footage of protest against police brutality and clips of individuals who have been impacted by police violence. I mean, it's, it's traumatizing, you know? So there are different types of police injustice, too. I mean, there's, you know, civil asset uh, forfeitures and, you know, they're seizing people's cars and houses and stuff without proving that they're guilty. And, you know, they, they never get those back. I mean, I'll, again, I, there are examples that will be on the screen, but you can look this stuff up. You don't have to trust me for anything. Actually, I love trustless everything. Um, so the traditional police system, uh, once meant to protect and serve, has become the tool of oppression. Um, a blue, uh, I mean, it, it just beats down the, marginal, the marginalized and protects the powerful. That is very, you know, basic. And uh, I think blockchain has a lot of solutions for all these things. So, for example, if you look at, like, if you look at charity and you look at, you know, say Robert Smith paid for your tuition, right, and then you realize that he didn't actually pay for your tuition, you know, it was just a money scheme, and then, you know, he didn't actually pay anything. But with blockchain, you can actually, you know, kind of, you know, not play that game as, as much, I guess. And I guess financial people will always play those financial games in, in a way. But I think it, it hurts us more than, you know, it benefits anyone. It just benefits the top, you know, richest people. Um, for, for, for basically for, um, for policing, you know, for policing, there's a lot of stuff that could be done in, in a uh, traditional police system, you know, that, that can be blockchain empowered, you know. Uh, it could be, you know, um, like the body cams and data tracking can ensure that officers are held accountable f for their actions. But maybe it's, maybe it's, you know, Centralized. Maybe it's more accessible to people. You know, maybe their policies are more accessible to people. Maybe when they take assets from you and not prove that you're guilty, right? Maybe those assets are actually held somewhere where they will be actually returned in a trustless manner. Maybe like a synthetic swab, you know, um, something like that. Synthetics. Shout out synthetics. I mean, not I'm not a holder. Uh, just like the idea of, you know, swapping real life assets on the blockchain, or essentially claiming them or doing anything with real life assets on the blockchain, you know? So there are solutions to different things uh, where you could get real specific, but I won't bore you with the technical jargon. I'm sure you've had enough. Biddle week, you know, we've got all these great minds in here, all the presentations. I know I'm burnt out after I seen that Linux uh, on, uh, on Cartesi, Linux on Ethereum, like that was just. So, I mean, back to, back to our, our talk here, so I guess, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was, was homelessness. So the craziest thing I realized, too, is like 
a lot of our a lot of our community has like a problem with um you know living apparatus you know like it's expensive it's getting more expensive and i mean maybe the cost of you know people renting apartments and turning them into businesses as airbnbs while avoiding a lot of safety precautions and a lot of measures like maybe that has to do with it you know in big cities but i think it's more of a systemic thing also uh did you know that like a lot of governments are allocating billions i mean even state governments are allocating billions of dollars to solve homelessness every year yet there's more homeless every year like what is going on and so what's going on is these people that are allocated this money make a lot of money and they don't want to lose their jobs so they don't want to be homeless huh the irony <laughs> so this is this is where you know again for, for blockchain we can we can do things as a community um, that you know will help this i mean it's like homelessness this is this is the poetic again you know this is a whole production but so the homelessness like a dark cloud hangs over our cities we see the tents makeshift shelters where people try to survive the harsh winds of life and what if i told you that these in charge of fixing the problem don't want to solve it at all the wealth and power depend on its existence um what was it and on its existence like vultures circling a carcass you know again a lot of imagery a lot of things like that i wanted you guys to really feel me and feel the point you know but i think i think you know just my voice should be should be good um and so let's see okay so we'll get to the education part uh just in one second but basically what i wanted to say was you know we can we can raise funds in a decentralized way there's quadratic funding there's all kinds of things that we can do in blockchain that can help raise funds and and put up you know put up uh, you know homeless shelters and, and you know do it in a way maybe that actually rewards the users in one way or an or another to where it's incentivizing for you to do good and again this is about the system of good and the system of good is that human power protocol that anyone can tap into from anywhere in the world it is the most advanced thing you can ever hear of and i got it here for you on stage you got you got the you got the first look at it you know you don't need an sdk to get involved so with that with that out of the way i would say you know education comes next and edu with education i i um i'm um kind of you know in a shock of how the 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 debt system works the more i studied about this the more i started getting like little white hairs on my on my chin right here and because it is it's essentially it's essentially slavery in one way or another you know it's financial slavery you know you you it's this debt that you got to pay it keeps increasing over time the companies are collecting and doing collections just keep passing the the tabs back and forth and you know you can never get rid of it you know not 7 years not whatever the law says and uh you know it's it's uh it's, it's time for 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 a new system you know I've seen that some blockchains have implemented, you know, IDs and things like that, uh maybe diplomas for for uh colleges and universities. And I'm I'm personally really excited about the Starknet ID project because I think that is a very very cool way to have a, a permissionless trustless um ID solution. It could be used for diplomas or any verification that is built on Ethereum. Uh so I think that that is a solution also in education. Now you know this is for verification I guess of degrees and things like that but is it solving the debt problem? Is it solving the student debt problem? And I think it's not. Well I think you know I urge you guys to think about it and maybe we can all you know talk about it and find a way that we could set up you know this extension of the system that can help and maybe i'm missing it maybe it's still it's here now maybe one of us here in the building has a solution i want to know about it you know and so we're here to connect uh i've been hacking all week as the uh bitle team uh uh tech tech team lead and you know it's been a long nights we got to present tomorrow so we've got a few things that we're working on and one of those things is actually also a kind of like an easier way to help projects or um web2 companies you know get involved and in, and realize how they can create their own charitable systems using crypto um 
there's a few reasons why any you know brand would benefit from using crypto charities. You know, the one that comes to mind right away is that they're non-refundable, unlike a lot of other charity, which uh, does get uh, charged back. Um, I think there was like $100 million that got charged back last year in charity. That's a shame. You know, they changed their mind, I guess. Um, but, um, so, I mean, charity is meant to be a force of good, but, you know, it is, it is kind of a mirage sometimes, you know, a massive truth, but... No one can really tell the real intentions of anyone, and so I'm always open-minded. You know, I won't say, oh, the rich is doing this or that until I, the math doesn't add up. So when, that, when that's not adding up, though, you know, just know that we're here and we're looking and we're smart. And we're cutting edge. We're at the very front of this. You know, our, our culture is not as unstoppable. You know, we, everyone uses the culture every time, and my question is always, what are you giving back to those that create this culture, you know, to those that are, you know, on the front line every day, you know, just facing different systems of oppression, you know, and maybe you're, you're, you're not feeling it. Maybe you're the beneficiary, you know, you got to take a closer look. If you don't feel the system of oppression, then you're just, you're benefiting from it. So I urge you all to tap into that protocol and, um, you know, be good, you know, and create systems of good, you know, don't just create stuff. You know, this, this NFT project, we did not care about selling anything. We just wanted to make sure there was a way for this to be systemic. I didn't have to hold everyone's hand because I could drop it all in a thread in a Discord, you know, or something like that, for example. You know, this is, it's more of a systemic thing rather than just me trying to do one thing at a time. Um, so I think, I mean, uh, another idea we had here was, was the idea of, like, you know, rather than these companies and these billionaires, like, donating a lot of money at once, why wouldn't they donate small portions over, you know, like rhythmically over time, you know, reoccurring uh, donations? I think this would solve a lot of the, the, the problems, like, you know, with them just, oh, you know, I just got a tax bill of a million dollars. I'm going to go ahead and put this million dollars over here, and now cha-ching, cancels out, or maybe I even get money back, you know? It, it, it won't be when you want it. It won't be when it's convenient. It's like, it's reoccurring, you know? One way that could happen in blockchain as well, um, in a verifiable way, right? In a non-immutable way, for the most part. And I, I know I've got about 20 seconds uh, left here. Uh, I had a lot. I had, you know, examples. I had uh, other things for you guys. The silver lining is that blockchain technology can be used to create better systems and address issues in a traditional uh, uh, you know, way of life that just don't work anymore. Um, now, blockchain is secure, transparent, decentralized, and uh, it makes a perfect solution to a lot of these issues. But, I mean, is it, is it just like a magic wand? No. You know, it's still, it's still a tool, and it still could be used in any way. And this is where we come in, the people. This is where we come in, and we just make it happen. You know, we, we create these systems of good, and we... Um, you know, just empower each other and be good to each other, you know? And that's what it's all about. So for a little plug, just go to the cyberpanthers.xyz, the learn and earn tab. Uh, just, I guess, just learn and earn, you know, get those NFTs. And I mean, they're not, you know, no uh, financial advice, uh, obviously, but you're earning the knowledge. That's what I mean by learn and earn. We completely redefine that. We don't, we're not talking about, you know, you earn anything. You're learning and you're earning what you just learned. So. Um, my name is Ryder, and it's been a pleasure. I'll see you uh, around. If you guys have any ideas or any input, please let me know, and I'll see you, uh, see you around the uh, East Denver.